So if I had asked you what you want to be when you were in year 10, so like mid-teen, what would you have answered? Living like an actress. It was, yeah, actress of some sort, performance art or teaching. Like what's more fulfilling than teaching the next generation like how to be a good person? So you never saw marketing in your career? Never, You kind of just ever. fell into it because the no company way. needed a marketer. I don't even know what marketing was. You asked me this question as we were preparing for this and you were like, do you consider yourself a marketer? I still don't identify, if you will, as a marketer. What was a really hard time in your career? <laughs> Asking for my first pay rise. It's quite humorous, actually. So I would have been earning 40 grand. Not a lot, right? Anyway, I went and sat down with him. I'm like, yeah, I want a pay rise I'm like this much. And he just looked shocked. <laughs> I was like, why are you shocked for? Like, am I not worth that money? But I can't remember the, the full conversation, but I do remember the just uncomfortableness of having that conversation at a young age mm -hmm. with someone that was really intimidating to me. I'm having issues this week because my trainer at the gym, who's like 23 or whatever, and I got told, oh, I can tell you're over 30 from the socks you wear. <laughs> yeah, so I had a bit of a coaching <laughs> session with Tasha this week, just trying to educate her on the socks that the young generation wear these days. Yeah, okay. The young generation don't wear ankle socks they wear the crew cut so what Tasha was doing was she was wearing white converse with black ankle socks you don't have to tell everyone I've learnt now <laughs> you are 30 <laughs> <laughs> all right well on that note yes Linda and I both hit the big 3-0 this year which I now feel like we're just full of so much more wisdom yeah yeah like straight away turn 30 boom wisdom -ness. yeah 29 Ooh. no is now stupid <laughs> 30 smart we've got experience now we're in our 30s right Welcome to the Marketing Mentors Podcast brought to you by Red Pandas Digital. I am Tasha, joined by, of course, the one and the only, the lovely Linda. Woo, Linda, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Tia. You. You're very welcome. It's a very great <laughs> intro. Um, it was. So today's episode is an interesting one. We don't have a very tactical agenda set, if you will. Uh, it's more along the lines of getting to know your marketing mentors, Tasha and Linda, um, and really, you know, maybe getting a little bit off script. So often we talk, like I said, very tactical about like marketing things or leadership things or coaching things. And I think, um, you know, for all our many, many listeners that we have, that, you know, I'd be wondering, like, who are these incredible women behind? <laughs> <laughs> if you guys don't know T by now, she's 100% adding so much GST That's to fine. that. Hey, look, it's probably very entertaining for someone somewhere, right? Um, you know, who we are, some of the decisions mm. or the hard times we've had to get over to get to where we are in our careers, some of the things we're dealing with right now in terms of professionals, Decisions um, that we need to make. Yeah, decisions yeah. we need to make, challenges we've overcome, great things about our, uh, you know, our careers and where we've come from. Uh, a little bit more about us on like a deeper level and what I mean by off script is obviously it's not like a tactical, tactically speaking thing. Um, but, yeah, just to learn more about us and I'm because I'm a true believer and like even in just our last episode we're talking about you have something you can learn from everyone. Mm. So, yeah, you and I can sit here and we do every fortnight. We sit here and give like incredible amounts of value and tactics yeah. to you know, up and coming marketers just really at any point in their career. Um, but today is more on a personal level. And I yeah. think what people might be potentially struggling with themselves mm. or have struggled with to know that, you know, you're not alone. Yeah. And everyone goes through some types of these struggles at some point during their career. Yeah. Yeah. I like that tea. Um, while you were speaking, you kind of just reminded me like I was at the coffee shop the other day ordering my normal almond latte. <laughs> Basic white bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the, the uh, barista, barista? Yeah, 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 he's a barista. <laughs> he was telling me that he's studying marketing um, because I told him I'm in marketing. Um, and he just was asking so many questions about mm. like, what does that look like? You know, what avenue did you go down? What avenues are there? Like I'm studying right now. Like yeah. where do you work? Do you like it? Um when I go to the hairdressers, you know, the hairdresser will tell me her daughter is interested in marketing, but she wants to do it for the big brands. Like, and so like the conversation comes up so often and we don't really just talk about like us as marketers, but also as just individuals and the journeys that we've both been on to get where we are. Yeah. Um, so it might be wise to like start there for those of you who don't know. So, I mean, we're both 30 this year. Uh, why would you speak that Because, no. Beep it out. That why is would you age? Know? I am proud <laughs> to be 30. No, I'm no, look, I'm okay, having, I'm having, so issue, I'm having issues 30. this week because <laughs> my trainer at the gym, who's like 23 or whatever, 
Kate, I don't know how old you guys are, but maybe you're under 30. And I got told, oh, I can tell you're over 30 from the socks you wear. <laughs> yeah, so I had a bit of a coaching session with Tasha this week, just trying to educate her on the socks that the young generation wear these days. Yeah. Mind you, I've actually worn my ankle socks, which is an idea. Yeah, because you're over 30. The younger 30. generation don't wear ankle socks. Oh, they apparently wear it's like old. the crew cut. Whatever. So. And ski legs. I'm wearing ski legs. So and what ankle Tasha socks was doing today. was she was wearing white Converse with black ankle socks that you, you have could to tell see. everyone. I've learnt now. <laughs> you are 30. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, yes, Linda and I both hit the big three O this year. We've hit the three O, which I now feel like we're just full of so much more wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. Like straight away, turn thirty, boom, wisdomness. Yeah, twenty nine, no wisdom. No, stupid. <laughs> thirty, smart. We've got experience now. We're in our thirties, right? And with that said, where were you going with that pun? Because <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> well, I guess like we're gonna talk about yes. how we got here, but like where are we right now? Uh, so yes. we're yeah. both thirty, <laughs> yeah. wearing ankle right. socks. Yeah. <laughs> And skinny legs. <laughs> T is, I mean, we're all kind of do, like we're doing different things in the business, but really T is uh, VP of operations. Me more so like spending more time on the, in the marketing manager side of the business as well. So that's I know what we currently are at. quote unquote official Linda, but you're the Red Panda's marketing manager. I don't care. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Marketing manager, still managing accounts, whatever you call it. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. There's a bit of that, right? Um, but yeah, it so with saying that, you know, we've both been on journeys to get here. Um, so I might kick it off, T. Yeah. Please. Let's go way back. Okay. <laughs> so if I had asked 30 you. Years. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm not quite 30 years. I don't want to know about that. Okay, all right. That's fine. Um, so if I had asked you what <laughs> you want to be when you were in year 10, so like mid-teen, mm. what would you have answered? Oh, uh, left me like actress or something. Sort of, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> something with cameras and lights and all the attention. So this is the next best thing, yeah, a 100%. podcast with me. Yeah, yeah, you know, those that can't do <laughs> teach, right? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, it was, yeah, actress of some sort, performance art or teaching, to be fair, teaching. Yeah, because you were into childcare. Yeah. I know that's a really big passion for you, which you might want to still go to. Oh, still very point. much. Still very much, yeah. I love early childhood education. Yeah. Personally. I think it's like a... Beautiful space to work in. It's extremely fulfilling. Mm. Like what's more fulfilling than teaching the next generation like how to be a good person? Oh, I love that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because birth to five is when that happens. So if you can be the best role models for children, like you can just create better generations. So that age group was the passion? The, yeah, like it's really beautiful. Zero to five. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. I wanted to go on to do primary teaching but then got mm. a job in a childcare centre which then led me to working as a marketer. Yeah, so for no. those of you who don't know, T, you were working at, I want to say Kids, Kids Club. Club. Yeah, 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 which is Kids a client Club. of ours. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Um, but this is like over 10 years ago now. Like I think I had my 19th birthday when I was there. I can't remember. It was a long time ago. Wow. Uh, so long time ago, yeah, and then um, – So you never crazy. saw marketing in your career? Never, hey, You kind of just ever. fell into it because the no company way. needed a marketer. I don't even know what marketing was. I mean, does any father Still know, what know what marketing is? He's <laughs> lost my dad. And he's like, I don't know. She's happy. Did you say father? I'm yeah. Not father? What did you say? <laughs> does your dad know what you do? <laughs> Because why does it still? <laughs> he probably thinks he does, but you know. <laughs> Sorry, Dad, love you. I was um, um yeah. I was hosting a thirtieth birthday party for my partner. Yes, and um I was explaining to someone what I do, mm. and they um and my dad was standing in the conversation, like we're all talking, um because they were asking me like what I do in marketing, this that, um and and the person that I was talking to, they relayed the conversation back to me later in the night because they were like, does your dad know what you do? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, I don't feel like he does. Why? <laughs> And they were like, because when you were explaining it, your dad was like really listening intently and nodding his head like he was hearing it for the first time. I'm like, yeah, I don't know what yeah. marketing is. <laughs> anyway. I love that though. Good on Linda's dad. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you're happy and healthy. It's yeah, fine. that's it. Yeah. So, yeah, no, marketing was not in the goals for me ever. I still, and you asked me this question as we are preparing for this and you were like, do you consider yourself a marketer? Mm. I still don't identify if you will, as a marketer. Yeah. I work in marketing. I've worked at a marketing agency for a long time. I can do marketing. I'm familiar with marketing principles and tactics and strategies. Yeah. But I wouldn't call myself a marketer. It's really interesting. Yeah, because I wouldn't have thought that, to be honest. I mean, I can't see myself as anything but a marketer, but 
maybe that's just the like the degree and everything that maybe. comes back at me and it makes me feel like Whereas, this is what I've been trained for. And you I know feel what like mean? I've been trained to be a teacher. Yeah. And that's like what I've yeah. got, right? So I feel yeah. like a teacher. Yeah. And then I said to you before, leader is the other thing that comes into play. And I think that that's been an organic, <clears throat> excuse me, actually, to be fair, when I didn't get school captain in year six, that was quite traumatic. Uh, <laughs> so I feel like I've always been I was sports captain, just saying. Oh, I got um, prefect. Who cares about prefect? Exactly. <laughs> right? So then I changed schools. Congrats on participating. Yes, <laughs> exactly. I changed schools and I was told you can get high, you'll get school captain in high school. And I worked my tushy off all the way up into year 11. How do you work mm. to be school captain? SRC every year. I represented the school in every which way I possibly could. Yeah, right. Sports, academics, debating, public speaking, 100% attendance up oh, until year debating. 11. Wow. Um, like role model student ducks, like A grades. Yeah. I was a very good student up until year 11. Until with you With one goal in mind, school captain. Right. I didn't get school captain. I got, I'm not even vice. I got like in the prefect team. Right. Yeah, it was done. It was done. <laughs> Year 12 was a mad write-off for me because I didn't achieve the goal. And, like, I think it was a big learning curve at a young age. Mm. Like, even if you work your ass off, you don't always get what you want. Yeah. But I know now, like, as an adult, <laughs> it doesn't always mean uh, that. But anyway, <laughs> unresolved trauma, still trying to deal with it. <laughs> Today's I'm just surprised you put all that energy into that because when I was – uh, sports captain in year six. <laughs> I feel like they just gave it to me. Yeah, year six. Like, is, I think year six is a bit different. Like you're young, right? Is Not, it? Yeah, I, I just remember the badge on my dress one day. Yeah. That's it. I don't yeah. remember anything. Else <laughs> well done, that. Linda. Well done. But yeah, high school is a bit different. I feel like I did. I worked like I, I remember someone telling me something as a child and then like I worked really hard for it. Probably is why my like my work ethic is the way it is. Mm. Is because I, when I, when I have, uh, something in mind that I want, I will go after it. But I, yeah, it's really interesting. It's really interesting, like how much I wanted that leadership role at a yeah. very young age, twice at yeah. the end of year six yeah. and at the end of year twelve, year eleven. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't get them, so it was quite like heartbreaking. But yeah. anyway, let's we don't have to open up that can of worms any more than what it's been opened. Okay. The takeaway there is leadership. Yeah. And so I definitely yeah, yeah. right now, as an adult, like a thirty-year-old adult, identify <laughs> as a teacher and a leader. Like mm. for those around me, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Same question to you, Linda. What did you want to do when you are in your mid-teens? Um, I think, yeah, tennis player, I have to say, obviously. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, yeah. I played tennis competitively when I was younger. You are pretty close to it. Um, right? Yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. But then I hit kind of going into my HSC and my parents were like, you got to pick one or the other because you can't do both and do like one of them really well. You've got to pick one. And they pushed me towards the HSC and I was kind of like getting injuries and things like that. Yeah. So I stopped with the tennis. Um, but, yeah, like when I stopped with the tennis and then I started with my HSC, I'm like, I feel really lost. I actually had no idea what I wanted to do. Yeah. I kind of got like decent grades in every subject. I wasn't like super passionate or there wasn't one skill that like I felt like really stood out mm-hmm. to me. I definitely liked the the creative stuff. Like I've always been that creative type of person, like the, the um, you know, drawing class and things like that, right? So, yeah, I, I didn't know like after tennis, to be honest. It put me in a place where I had no idea what I wanted to do. I took a gap year yep, after then. school and my parents were like mortified because they oh. thought I was never going to go to uni after I'm a gap year. I'm a big believer of gap years. If you don't Same. know, if you finish year 12 and you're like, yeah. I really don't know what to do with my life, I think a gap year is a perfect. What's a year in your life? That's it. Yeah. Even if you take with, a few, I think you've got to be mindful because the, 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 the challenge is, is you take a few years off, you start earning good money and then you're like, oh, I'm going to go back to uni and not earn good money. Mm. Whereas in that year off, it's enough time to probably not, like you can earn a bit, yeah. enough to, you know, buy something, go on a trip, travel a little bit. That's what I did. Yeah, yeah. And then go back into study. Lived my best life in Europe. Yeah. Found, sure myself. <laughs> Found myself. Found myself. No, then I came back um, and then I studied psych and I did business, not knowing which way I wanted to go, but yep. I thought business would just complement anywhere that I went. And then, yeah, I kind of learned like I was just really good at marketing, like it was easy. So I kind of went down that path. I was like, okay, this is really easy, which was a bit lazy of me, but I'm like I'm getting such good grades doing marketing with yeah. my eyes shut as opposed to psychology, which I actually – really enjoyed but it was much harder to get yeah. the same grades i reckon if you went back now as a mature age student and you did <gasps> yeah i would be <laughs> would be like, would i and did yeah nah, that's yeah, 40 isn't no, it no 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 it's definitely 30 um Damn. everyone there is 19 
Yeah, true. You'd feel odd. Let that it's like going you. back to a club. Yes. <laughs> Depends what club it is. <laughs> 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 Tasha's like, I know which ones. <laughs> Got to go to the 25 and up. Anyway, uh, what's mm. your next question? <laughs> that was a good one. I like that one. Okay. All right. Who has been your role model and mentor? So how have they influenced your career? Um, I don't know if I've got one apart from Moby, to be quite honest. Mm. I think I was always looking for one, like in my early years of a career. And I yeah. would try and like latch on to women Same. around me, like powerful women, mm. you know, women in leadership around me. Yeah. And very quickly I would see them crumble or some like something that would do something or behave in a certain way that I'm like, mm, I don't want to like, no, you're, mm-hmm. I'll take you off that pedestal, move on. Yeah. So I had quite a few that I kind of like chopped and changed between. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until I met Moby uh, almost 10 years ago that I think he saw something in me and just like offered to be a mentor and then it went off from there. So, yeah, I'd say it's probably been Mobes. More yeah. recently, Soph, so his wife, the CFO of the business, from a parent's, like from a yeah. parenting point of view. So since I became a parent, definitely mm-hmm. a mentor role model there. Yeah. Me to look up, like look to. Mm. But I think what I really enjoy with, with them is that there is a, a mutually beneficial relationship. So it's not like they, I just get value from them, they get value from me. So I feel like yeah. that's probably been the most success out of the mentor relationship I have with them is that it's mutually beneficial. Because when a relationship, in, in my opinion, when a relationship isn't mutually beneficial, I don't know. I don't know if it always lasts as long. Unless yeah. we're talking about mentors like your Tony Robbins or your Jesus, right? Like they're very, very different type of mentors. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so sorry for religious people. Jesus can be a mentor for people. I know. They, they I can. So. Definitely can. Yeah. You know, just religion in general is a good like mentoring type of thing. But nonetheless, when you're getting that like day to day or week to week, month to month, whenever you're meeting that mentor, that mutual beneficial, I feel like for me it's worked really well. Yeah. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I've always gone back to my cousin actually. Yeah, you Stefania. have. Yeah, Stefania. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she, yeah, I th- she's gone through like a lot of struggles in her life and it's been really like inspiring watching her get through those struggles and end up where she is now. Like she ran a super successful um, wedding planning company, Mm. like super, super successful, now has a child. It's just, yeah, I I really have like been able to watch her journey and learn off her and actually not make a lot of mistakes because I've seen her go through those things. So, yeah, I'd say her to be honest. I love that you say uh, not make mistakes after she mentioned she has a child. What do you mean? (laughs) Was the child the mistake? Oh, it's what? <laughs> no. It was a joke. It was a yeah. joke. <laughs> I don't understand. It's not a joke because I have a child, so it's not a joke. It's fine. <laughs> Moving on. So Stefania has been a role model for you, someone you can yeah. go to. and Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, nice. Yeah, from a successful point of view, whether it's in business, whether it's with family, still being able to maintain relationships. Like that's always been, a, I think, a big thing for me, trying to find balance in my life. Yeah. Um, Between – family and friends and work and that balance is important for me mm. and I feel very like out of whack and not myself when I'm really heavily invested in one over the other yeah um and she's always been able to maintain that really really well yeah, it's nice. um and carry herself really well throughout everything that she's gone through so yeah oh cool. I would say her oh nice yeah all right next yeah I want to hear more, more, more okay more, more, more. all right um what was a significant moment or achievement in your career that you consider pivotal to your success? How far back do we want to go? Like do you know what all I mean? the way back. All right. Well, if I really truly think about meeting Mopes at the kids club days were definitely mm. was definitely like a, a pivotal moment. It has to be. Yeah. Because it was when I, and I remember the day I met him like it was yesterday. Uh, and I remember my boss at the current time saying to me, don't be fooled by his charm. And I'm like... John, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, he just, wow. Yeah, I was like, I don't know. Because, like, you know, he was just really good at marketing. Like, he knew what he was Ten talking about. Ten years later. Yeah, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I was 100% pulled by his charm. Um, <laughs> but that was that day. But I think I, I think back to prior to that, like, how did I end up in that office? Yeah. With that decision power to have, you know, Red Pandas and Moby come in and, you know, uh, tender, if you will, or quote for the job, which was the agency we needed. Mm. And this was, again, going back to working in childcare. Yeah. 
And when I was working on the floor as a childcare room assistant, mm-hmm. like no title, that's like bottom of the food chain, still in uni, I was working casually, any shift I could find. I was the cleaner, the cook and a childcare assistant because I wanted like every shift I could possibly get. Mm. So I was like, just give them all to me. I was burning out 100%, but, right. you know, I had goals, right? So um, there was one kid who, funnily enough, I'm now friends with her parents on Facebook because I connected with them so well. And she was having a hard time transitioning into the room. She was about two and a half at the time. And one morning her mum dropped her off. Kid was in tears. It was quite a traumatic morning for the mum. And I could see that, you know, I would have been 19, 20, if that. I could see that it was hard on mum. So once the little girl settled, I called her mum within an hour or so and I just said, hey, I'm just letting you know your daughter settled. Mm -hmm. She's fine. She's doing this right now and we're having a great day. Right? This was before the days where now childcare apps, you get messages right. every three minutes when your child does anything. Oh, maybe really? your child looks one way. Oh, there's a message. Do you know what I mean? Like you get told everything now. Yeah. This is before those apps were around. So a phone call was required, right? Mm-hmm. That mum, she must. it must have been the way I spoke to her, whatever it was, but she wrote this essay of a feedback to my director at the time mm-hmm. and just praising me. I printed it and I still have it in my f- oh, filing cabinet at home. That's nice. Because it was probably one of the first times I've received such um, such a glowing recommendation. Mm-hmm. And it was from that letter that was received to the director, not just the um, like supervisor but the director of the centre yeah. that I was then offered a role in head office. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if she didn't send that, if that would have happened. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, right. Yeah, that's one of those things where just everything, the right timing, right things happening at the right time, yeah. And I'll never forget it because it was like I was young. I was just doing my job. Like I didn't think anything other than this little girl's sad, her mum's sad. I could clearly see her mum was sad. Yeah. That she And like now being a parent, I have left childcare crying many times. Yeah. And some days I wish someone would call me, but it's a different level of service that I provided, obviously, I see now. Yeah. I have to call up and ask, how's she going? Because I'm not going good. <laughs> it's not therapy, it's fun. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think that was one of those moments. And oh, that's really nice. Shortly after, meeting Moby. So those are probably the two key standouts. There's many others. Yeah. There's many bad ones I can remember as well, if you want to ask me that next week. So true. Yeah, yeah. But same question to you, Linda, something that stands out in your early career or at some point? Um, pivotal moment. I think um, probably earlier in my career, I would say, like, um, you kind of know the story a little bit. Like, you know, I was in a a big, um, big company, you know, thousands of employees started out there with my first marketing gig, second marketing gig. So I was really new in the in the industry, I think less than maybe three years experience, maybe it was like two years experience under my belt. And then a really big marketing role came up in that company. like I'm talking like, you know, half a million dollar budget sort of role, like like sexy role. Mm. And I remember thinking like I'm so young in my career, but like fuck it, I'm just going to try and go for it and see what happens. And I remember like just imposter syndrome in the interview, like freaking out. But like I feel like putting myself in that position and just like knowing that I might not get it and knowing that people are going to know I applied and not get it, but just being able to just not give a fuck yeah. and still just try and do it anyway. And like in those big companies, you know, everyone talks, like it gets around and then you get a bit of a rep, oh, she's not very good. You know, like I was thinking about all that, but I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to go for it, whatever. Yeah. Whatever happens, happens. I went for it. I got the role. Um, and then I, I remember there was a moment in that role where we had a national conference and I got asked to present from a marketing point of view. And um <laughs> just like, oh, I'm not qualified for this. <laughs> well, yeah, like imposter syndrome set in. Wow. But like I remember I got amazing feedback and it amazing. was so validating because I was just driven by like all this fear that I wasn't good <laughs> enough. And I was like, I was trying to figure it out. Yeah. Like I was dealing with had business you, like, problems. Textbooks open, right? I swear to God, yeah. I had my uni textbooks that were helping me with frameworks to be able to like come up with strategies. Wow. Like that was how and no one knew that. No yeah. one knew that. But, yeah, I remember doing this this presentation. It was super validating. I remember getting a lot of good feedback. The other states were like, when is she going to come and present here? Because they wanted the support. So, it was, yeah, that, that was like really, I think, pivotal for my career, putting myself in that position at such like a young age. I was like young, like early 20s. Can you imagine doing that now as the marketer you are now, though? 
up. Oh god. They wouldn't pay me enough. Yeah, yeah, I'm about to say. Like, <laughs> yeah. see how see how much like time and experience and being 30 changes you? Yeah, so true. <laughs> so true. I love that. Yeah. Any other moments or memories you want to no, share? No, I, th- I think that's a big one that stands yeah, out. No. Yeah. Yeah, that's when imposter syndrome works. Mm, yeah, true. <laughs> Sometimes it's crippling. And it doesn't remember? cripple you. Yes, yeah. Exactly. Okay, let's do opposite then. What was a really hard time in your career? <laughs> Asking for my first pay rise. It's quite humorous, actually. Uh, yeah, so I was, again, this is Kids Club, it, Kids Club days. I know Corey yeah. would love me sharing this. Um, and I fully remember where we were and how it happened and Anyway, so I would have been earning 40 grand, something like not not a lot, right? It was yeah. little. And I went in and I think I asked for like eight. <laughs> Damn. I didn't know. My first pay rise, I asked for 10K. I thought I, I was like know. asking for heaps. I didn't know, right? I didn't yeah, know. Yeah. It was the first time I ever did it. I didn't get any advice. I just was mm-hmm. like, you know, that sounds like a good number. <laughs> like I'll just do it. It was a bit, <laughs> like a was a bit naive. Good round number. Yeah, you know, fine, whatever. I didn't do maths in high school and I didn't finish doing the maths piece in university either. So like, you know, numbers, right? Anyway, I went in, sat down with him. I'm like, yeah, I want a pay rise. I want to go like this much. And he just looked shocked. <laughs> I was like, why are you shocked for? <laughs> like, am I not with that money? Like, I was so <laughs> not, I was so naive. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. And I remember, I can't remember the the full conversation, but I do remember the um the just uncomfortableness yeah. of having that conversation at a young age mm-hmm. with someone that was really intimidating to me then. How old do you think you would have been? Early twenties again. Definitely under yeah. twenty five. Definitely under twenty five. That's um that's really impressive because mm. like I've had colleagues before. <laughs> or stupid. No, like. no, no. <laughs> hey, if you're not gonna ask, no one else is gonna ask for you. Yeah. So I think it's really impressive team. Yeah. I remember I've had colleagues and they've been 30 to 40, even older, and they've never asked for a pay rise before. Wow. They've been too worried to have that conversation. Yeah. Oh, I got so shut I down. Think that that's mad. Who I got shut down hard. Asked, and they know you're yeah. thinking about that. Yeah. And I, I, I did end up getting a pay rise. It was much smaller than what I asked for. But that's it was right. also Everything's a huge a negotiation. learning curve, massive, massive learning curve. Mm. And now I'm like so comfortable Asking for pay rises. Yeah. Like I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good to know. <laughs> just take good note. Oh no, I don't no. I don't get I don't get accepted for them. Oh uh, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> but I ask for them. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like yeah. weekly. <laughs> you know the one on one? Pay for me for Tasha. No, I'm joking. I don't. Oh. Um I definitely don't. Just a side note for those of you who are listening and you're kind of like, hmm, pay rise, that's interesting. It is a funny conversation to have. That's a podcast topic, how to ask your boss for a pay rise, by the way. Yeah, yeah, true. And that is a conversation that should be done yearly. Yeah, I have strong yeah, opinions yeah. on that. You don't ask for pay rises more than once a year unless you've had like a massive yeah. strain or increase in your responsibilities. Yeah. Businesses run in years, typically, financial mm-hmm. years, either whether it's January to December, calendar or fiscal, July yeah. to June, whatever. The logical and the business acumen thing to do is ask for your pay rise yearly. It's my two cents. Yeah, 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 agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So some, I'm sure some Gen Zs don't agree with that. <laughs> Put it out there. Okay. Your turn. Negative <laughs> memory. Let's go. And I reckon if you <laughs> let's end here. I, I was about to say this might be a nice way to end on a negative. Yeah, Love no, that for no. Us. Give us the negative. Give us the learning, and then we'll like sweeten it up. Um, a hard time in my career was when I was in that role. Mm-hmm. Um, so the one I mentioned that I asked for way back when. Um, and business was down. Um, and it was very negative, toxic culture. And the manager at the time, the business GM or whatever you want to call them, they were pinning sales against marketing. Uh And I was forced to have conversations that I wasn't equipped to know how to handle. And so because I didn't know how to handle them, I would be backed into a corner. Yeah. Um, and it was like blame culture. Yep. Um, you know, like it's the typical, you know, leads, leads are shit. Um, we don't have enough leads, like, you know, that sort of stuff. And I just, I couldn't handle the conversations yep. and they were really taxing on me. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, now it would be a totally different story, but back then as like a young 20 year old, yeah, they're hard. that there was really hard, yeah. yeah. Hard to have those conversations. Yeah. Really good learning for you though. Thickened your skin big time. It did. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I do recall Linda applying for the role at Red Pandas and me, Moby and Sophie sat there and we're like, this woman's way too qualified for this role. Well, I yeah, <laughs> like I remember to you, I was so burnt out. I didn't know if I yeah. wanted to keep doing marketing. Yeah, it's actually when you. I applied for Red Pandas, like 
I can say this now because I've been here for four years, but I'm, I was just like, I'm just going to go here as a part-time gig just to earn some money on the side yeah. while I figure out what direction I'd like to take my career. Yeah. And then I'll step away. Yeah. Like it was really, and I'm like, these people been seem like some good people to yeah. hang around with while I figure myself out. Yep. Yeah. But You're still figuring yourself out. Within the week, I ended up going full time and yeah, then back that. into more strategic roles. So yeah. just the way it was. Yeah. 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 And you're yeah. like, you're part of the furniture now. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're not going anywhere. At least until after you've had a We're baby. We're not going anywhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it. That could be. So I think episode on how to ask your boss for a pay rise. Mm. And an ep- the, what we didn't get to today, which I know we want to talk about and I would love to talk about with you so in time just along I think for any marketers or even just career driven people that are listening to this and are at a similar point in their life maybe they're around 30 or 30 ish and wondering it is aimed a bit more at women naturally like yeah um, maybe they're wondering what's my timeline look like mm. right Linda and I are the same age but we're at very different points in our lives and yeah. I'd love to share um, what we're thinking like, yeah what we're yeah. both thinking on that and the knowns, the unknowns, it's like, why not? Yeah, another day, another dollar. Well, that was so fun, T. Yeah, it was. I feel like I know you, but I still learn stuff. Always, yeah. every day, Linda. <laughs> the barrel is the rises. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Ciao, ciao. Bye.